Hey y'all, just um, stopping in to say any comments, likes, and or subscribes are always appreciated. Um, I always enjoy interacting with everybody and I love the support that you all give me. Um, so here's the video. Have a good day. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Laura and um, I am back showing you my first Christmas in July project share. Um, this idea came about probably the end of last year uh, but before I get into that um, I want to announce my giveaway winner and she's already been contacted so the winner is Callie G um, thank you everyone for entering that was really fun I love stitch and I wanted to share my love of stitch with everyone and um, I'm close to 300 subscribers so hopefully we'll do another giveaway then um, but I just wanted to show you uh, what I came up with um, so my idea was to do a homemade or handmade um, memory game. So you know the game where you've got all these cards and you've got to match the, uh, find the matching pictures and you've got to use your memory to do that. So um, let me just show you this process um, of what I did. Okay, so, well actually, you know what, let me take this out. So, what I did, and I'll talk about the box in a little bit too, was I took, oh, sorry, um, a 12 by 12 piece of chipboard. Now I used lightweight chipboard, um, but I would recommend either medium weight or heavyweight chipboard um, just to kind of keep their shape if you're wanting them to keep longer. Um, or if you use lightweight, it's fine. I mean, this is just a seasonal item or you could always laminate these. Um, so what I did was I went in my stash and I picked out the Safe Freeze uh, Hot Buy Paper Pad from Michaels. This is from last year. And what I did was I went through to find some um, how do you say, uh, so like a pattern that's repeating that doesn't have a lot of different directions because a couple of things, if you've ever played memory with a little kid, they like to cheat, right? Um, so they'll eventually remember, you know, this square had this picture on it. Um, so what I did was I picked these two patterns from that same paper pad. Um, this one I chose to be the side with the picture um, because if you can tell here, it's got a little bit of different variation in the brown. So it's got a little bit more inking in some places. Um, the blue has it, but it's not as noticeable, at least not to me. So what I did was I got a piece of chipboard. I, um, let's see, on one side of the chipboard, I went all around the perimeter with um, tape runner and then I went with some glue just all over the back and these are exactly 12 by 12 and so is the chipboard so I laid this on one side smoothed it over really well did the same thing for the other side um, the reason I did the glue runner on or the tape runner on the edges was so it could get to the very very edge of um, the border there and then once I did that um, so that it wouldn't lose its shape I put a couple of paper pads on top of it just to give it some weight left it there for maybe 20 minutes and I got some nice um, firm uh, pattern cover chipboard okay so then the next thing I did so I didn't use my um, paper trimmer. I actually have a um, guillotine uh, paper cutter. So I cut these into two by two squares and I chose um, 11 different prints of stickers because I had two of these safe, safe freeze um, sticker books as well. Now you may have sticker books where it's got um, duplicates, like duplicate pages, that's awesome. Um, this is a good way to use up your stickers as well. Um, so what I did was I found 11 um, images that were the same shape. Um, I thought about using some of these other ones. Let me show you back here. 
Um, these were cute, but I, I didn't really want to use too many of the sayings. Um, and I don't know, it was just going to be kind of tedious to add other of these images. And I thought these were too small. So, um, the reason I chose 11 images was because when you're playing one-on-one, -on -one, um, you want, the winner's going to have the most, right? You don't want to have a tie every time. So, um, 11, I would say would be the minimum. Um, and then you can go up from there. So I chose 11 images and I centered them each on the brown side of these squares. And then you've got a little memory game. Now, depending on the age of the child that you're going to give these to will depend on the um, number, of, number of images because they can't really remember, you know, 20 different ones. Um, they're going to get frustrated. Okay. So, oh, also a little side note. This is not the score and trim board that I got in one of my last hauls from Tuesday morning. That one was no good. That was, one of, I guess, the older version. Um, and the more I looked at it, the more I didn't want it. Um, this middle part bubbled or um, came up too much. So there was always this like extra, I don't know, spacing in there. And then apparently the trimmer blade that was on that one um, is discontinued. So that would be no good once I was done with that one blade. So I took it back and I got this one from Michaels. This is the newer version. It's definitely a lot sturdier, um, easier to maneuver. So I am glad I was able to get that. Okay, so the other thing I did was after I cut up all my strips, um, this is what was left over. So these two pieces and this one here, I only needed 22 squares. You could end up with I think 36 squares if you did two by two um, uh, squares for each of these cards. Um, so I've got these left over. Um, this was actually one of the leftover pieces. So I used that to reinforce the bottom of my box. Now, don't make fun of me. This is the first time of me making a box like this. Um, so the direction of the pattern is different, but who's gonna know? Who's gonna care? This is for some kids, right? Um, I will link the video to um, the tutorial that I used for this. Um, if you haven't checked out Crafting with Paula, or Craft with Paula, I'm sorry, um, she's she's excellent. She gives great tutorials. She gives great explanations. Um, this was actually from a tutorial that she did that showed you how to make different size boxes, not just one specific size, which is what I needed. Um, I needed something that was a little bit bigger than two by four and I made it work and she gave some really great tips. So this could actually house probably a little bit more if you can see in there. Um, I just made the sides an inch tall um, and then you've got your little lid here and there you go. So this is my very first um, Christmas in July project share. If you want the full tutorial, just let me know and I can make some time to make that happen. Um, I hope everyone is enjoying their day or night um, and I hope you take care and I will be back uh, to craft with you guys soon. Bye bye.